Talk Tuesday. Another Digital Talk Tuesday. We are live. This is Gerald Bass signing on tonight out of Atlanta, Georgia. And tonight we're going to be talking about the foundations of running profitable Facebook advertisement. And even if you're over on Instagram and you're looking to scale your business, you're looking to create more brand awareness as well. These same principles even apply when it comes to running Instagram ads. So tonight on this Digital Talk Tuesday, that's going to be the topic of discussion. I know the first week of Digital Talk Tuesday, we talked about how to grow the Instagram followers to over 100,000 followers and how to monetize it. Last week, we talked about the lead generation systems and sales funnels you want to have in place to generate daily leads and customers online for your business, being you have a service-based business. And now, today, we're going to talk about the foundations of running profitable Facebook ads. And like I say, even if you're looking as well to run ad campaigns, even over on Instagram, these same principles will apply as well. So with that said, we're going to see what we look like in terms of how many people are hopping on right now. And if you're hopping on, drop a comment below. Let us know you chimed in. Let us know you're checking in. Let us know where you're even checking in from. If you are uh, tuning in for the Digital Talk Tuesday tonight, we're going to get this thing going in another second or so. We're going to get this thing going in another second or so. Earl Mims in on Facebook. What's going on? Welcome, Earl. My guy, Earl. Charlotte. Charlotte, what's good? What's good? Everybody on the ground. Okay. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> so we super live over on Instagram right now. What's going on, Instagram? And by the way, you know, if you're not an aspiring entrepreneur or if you're not already an entrepreneur or business owner, this live stream isn't for you. I'm going to share that up front because last week I did hear that we had some haters over on Instagram. And, uh, you know, if you're not serious about bettering you and your family's future, if you're not serious about, you know, building something that can last for generations to come, and you're not serious about you know, hearing about these different strategies on how you can literally massively grow a brand or a business on the internet, then this is not the live stream for you, right? This is for people that are serious in terms of entrepreneurship, people that are serious in terms of growing businesses, building their brand, and really taking things to a whole other level, especially with what's going on during these times right now, right? When a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners, I'm pretty sure we can all agree, you know, Everyone is looking for strategies on how to definitely keep things going or even taking things to another level, even doing what's going on in the world right now. And a lot of times during crisis is when opportunities, you know, are created. And so, uh, you know, I definitely want to tell everybody to definitely stay safe out there. Um, you know, keep your family safe. Definitely prayers with anyone who may be affected um, from what's going on or if you have family members or loved ones. Um, but also for those as well who businesses may have taken hits during this time. You know, this is definitely an opportune time to definitely listen to what I'm going to be sharing in this training. And then, you know, not only that, even if your business has not taken a big hit, but you're not currently leveraging the paid ad platform to massively scale your business during this time, this is definitely a great conversation you want to definitely tap into and feel free to share this around with anyone else uh, you all feel can benefit and at any time as I go through this information you know if you're getting value definitely show me some love on the live stream on Facebook and Instagram and uh, if you have any questions as I go along feel free to drop those in the comment section as well so with that said I'm going to dive in you all 
And like I said, tonight we're talking about the foundations of running profitable Facebook ads. Now, I actually was recently interviewed this past week on one of my guys' Facebook live stream, and he was asking me the question of what's the difference between organically growing your business online or using paid media, okay? So when it comes to growing your business organically online, a lot of people believe that's what we call building your business free online, right? Meaning you don't have to spend any money. And in a lot of cases that could be true, but at the same time, even though you may not be physically spending money out of your pocket to grow your business organically online, you're using a lot of time, right? Most of the time, whether that's you posting on social media all day, posting in Facebook groups all day, whether that's you, you know, inboxing people or what have you, those ways take up a lot of time, right? So even though, yeah, you're not physically coming out of your pocket in terms of spending money, you're still utilizing a lot of your time a lot of times with that. And another thing as well with growing your business just organically, your business is not very predictable in terms of growing it on the internet, right? It's not very predictable. And so what I mean by that is, you know, you'll have people put out a post here and there on social media, or like I say, post in Facebook groups or post in different forums. And it's not guaranteed every time you make a post, you're going to generate a lead or you're going to get a customer or you're going to get a client for your business, right? So it's not very predictable. Matter of fact, a vast majority of business owners that's marketing online barely get any sales at times marketing that way for long periods of time because a lot of them don't even really understand, and I'm just keeping it real, they don't understand how to market online, okay, even from an organic approach. And so, you know, with that being said, like I say, organic is not a very predictable way to grow your business. Another thing in terms of organic, you know, versus paid is with paid, you're actually driving traffic typically to some type of system, which is I'm about to go a little bit more in detail than that on a, in a moment. You're usually driving traffic to some type of system, which allows you to build a database outside of social media, right? We don't own Facebook, we don't own Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, any of these platforms. And so by using paid media and being able to drive traffic to some type of lead generation system, where you can build a database of either leads that have an interest in your products and services, or build a database of people that purchase your products and services in terms of your customer database, Okay, now you have your own database, you have your own asset on the internet. The only assets you really have on the internet are typically your website, if you have a lead generation system, and if you're building an email list. That's typically your assets online, okay? Not these different social media platforms. So that's another thing in terms of the difference between organic and paid, okay? So paid is very predictable because once you actually have some ad campaigns that are winning and you know how much it costs for you to get a customer or a client for your particular business. Now it's just simply spending the required amount of money to get customers, to get clients on a daily basis, a weekly basis, and a monthly basis. Once you know your numbers and you have your numbers dialed in. Okay, so it's very predictable. Okay, another thing in terms of uh, running uh, paid ads as well is a lot of time, once again, the traffic is guaranteed, right? In most cases. In most cases, being that you have a compelling offer, you're getting your offers in front of the right audiences, you have some very compelling ads. In most cases, you're going to generate leads and you will get customers and clients, okay? It's more guaranteed on the paid ad side over just relying on organic ways to grow your business. Another thing with paid ads, you can get in front of more targeted audiences versus organic, okay? Which is, I'm going to talk a lot more about 
that we go through the foundations of running profitable Facebook ads, you can get more targeted traffic, more targeted leads for your particular business versus just growing organically. A lot of times, people are just marketing to who? Family and friends and people that went to high school with them, college, worked on jobs with them, or been part of organizations with them, or whatever the case may be, right? So with paid ads, you're able to reach massive audiences and very targeted audiences over just growing organically, okay? So with that being said, that's why I would say you should be doing both. But once you have an offer that's converting a product or service that's selling, I recommend definitely tapping into paid ads, okay? Definitely tapping into paid ads. So let's get into talking about the foundations of running profitable Facebook ads. Okay, a lot of people believe you should just go straight to the Facebook business page, all right, and boost the posts for $20 or $30 because Facebook is giving you notifications to boost the posts, okay? And I want to tell you this right now, that is not the way you really want to go. If you want to run massive profitable Facebook ad campaigns, you want to use the Facebook Business Manager, which has a lot more functionality in terms of running ads, whether this is Facebook or even on Instagram. You want to use the Facebook Business Manager. Okay, the Facebook Business Manager. All right, business.facebook.com. That's where you want to run your ads. Now, the first thing you want to keep in mind before you even thinking about setting up any type of advertisement campaigns. Okay, I see some people there run what we call PPE ads which is page post engagement ads, okay? And they'll basically run an ad, they'll, they'll basically, you know, boost a post of some type of image or maybe video on their Facebook business page, and they'll tell people to comment below if they have an interest in what they're doing. Okay, I'm gonna tell you this right now. With that right there, for one, you don't really have anything in place to qualify those potential supposed to be buyers, okay, just by them commenting. Just because somebody comments info or comment, I want your stuff, doesn't necessarily mean they're a qualified buyer. Okay? They haven't really went through any type of process to simply sort them as actually an uh, actual potential real buyer. Okay? Plus, it's going to take a lot of your time of every day having to go and respond to all these people commenting on your ad that they want info or they want to purchase what you have. And so with that being said, the first thing we recommend you do is set up a system where you can automate a lot of that and you can sift and sort and pre-qualify potential buyers versus tie kickers. But the first thing you have to have though, you have to have a converting offer. You ought to write that down. That's key to if you want to be very successful with Facebook ads, Instagram ads, etc. You have to have a converting offer. Meaning you have to have a product or service that's already selling. That's what you want to do. I'm talking about you want to run massive, profitable Facebook ad and Instagram ad campaigns. Take this from someone who's been managing campaigns for some years for clients now, and we run ads for our own business too. You have to have an offer that is already converted. It's already selling. If it's not already selling, you need to go out and get some sales organically first. Right? That's what you need to do. So you have to have an offer that's already converting that the market will want. And then the next thing you're going to want to put in place is a sales funnel. A sales funnel, a.k.a. lead generation system, customer acquisition system, etc. You're going to want to put this in place. And what you do is, based off whatever your offer is, you come up with some type of lead magnet that's correlated with your particular product or service. Whether that's a discount on your product or service on the front end, you know, whether that's a free plus shipping offer, whether that's a value video, an ebook, an article, a report, a cheat sheet, a survey, what have you, all right, you want to come up with a lead magnet, come up with a compelling headline that you can slap on a landing page, right, or opt in page of a sales phone. Okay, this is on the front end of a sales phone. All right, you want to come up with some type of compelling headline, right? I mean, that headline can be a lot of different things. It really just depends on the particular industry you're in. For instance, right now, you know, we're actually in the process of launching some ad campaigns for some of our clients in e-commerce. 
So all we simply have them doing is basically giving a discount on that particular front end offer, right? They're selling apparel. So we have pieces of their apparel on the opt-in page of the sales funnel and they're giving a discount on the front end for them, for their traffic to opt into this opt-in page with their name and email to get access to this offer and go over and take advantage of the promotion that's running. Okay, go on over and purchase, right? So that's part of the sales funnel. And then what happens is when they make that first purchase, the next thing happens is they automatically redirect it over to another page where they're positioned with a upsell, okay? An upsell of some type of bundle package around their apparel. But it's valued at this particular price, but if you go on and purchase right now on this page, you can get it for this price, right? So one time offer upsell, which increases the average order value of each customer, okay? This is very huge. All right, this is how you run profitable Facebook ad campaigns. This is not just for e-commerce. I'm just using that as an example. If they don't purchase the upsell, then of course, they're then offered a downsell, right? That's how we have it set up, okay? Of less apparel for a less price. Not only that, now they're also in the email database, right? They're in the email database. So for those that purchased the front end offer but didn't purchase the upsell, we can market to them through email marketing to purchase the upsell, right? For those that opted in for the front end offer but didn't take advantage of it once they opted in for it, we can have an email marketing sequence that goes out to them, redirecting them back to purchase the front end offer, okay? For all the abandoned carts, as we call them, okay? These are the type of things you can do. They purchase the front end offer, don't purchase the upsell or the downsell. Once again, you can sell them your other stuff until they decide to buy it through email marketing. Um, another thing as well, okay, is if they do purchase the front end offer and the upsell, guess what? Now you can still sell them to other stuff in the future, turning them into repeat customers which increases the average order value, which helps with making your Facebook ads when you launch them what? Profitable. That's what a lot of people don't realize. And there's a lot of business owners out there, I'm gonna tell you right now, why they're not profitable with Facebook ads? Because they have no type of back-end offers. You wanna write that down. They have no type of back-end offers. A lot of business owners don't have no type of high-ticket back-end offers, right? Nothing high-ticket. And that's why those that do have back-end offers, like things that they can offer their customers and clients on the back-end that's more valuable to their customer and client base, that can increase the average order value per customer and client, that's why they're able to spend more money on Facebook ads and Instagram ads to acquire customers and clients of those that don't have any type of back-end offer. So I have clients who have back-end offers of products that's like in the thousands of dollars, right? Like let's say for instance, I have one of my clients who had a back-end offer of a $3,000 high ticket type of product, right? Information product, by the way. So for her particular business, she was willing to spend anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500 to get a customer because she has high ticket type of stuff to be able to sell, right? So she's able to spend more to get a customer and client versus those that don't have any type of back-end offers that they can offer to their customers and clients of more value to them that can serve them more in order for them to part ways with their money and so that you can increase your revenue per sale to make you profitable. That's why this is very key right here, this offer and funnel. It's the same thing if you're generating appointments for your particular business. Believe me, we run ads for a lot of service-based businesses too, right? Or we run ads for those, we run ads for those in network marketing and all that type of stuff. And even for those that be in network marketing, a lot of times it's very difficult for some of them to become profitable as well is because a lot of them don't have anything uh, high ticket on the back end to be able to offer. 
right? They only have one thing to offer, which is a lot of times that opportunity and the profit margins are so small, you know, in terms of being able to earn from that. And so you have to do a whole lot of work to really get the ads dialed in um, to actually, you know, resonate with the particular market you're looking to target to get the ad cost as low as possible to get the ads to perform, which is we've had to do with some of our clients in network market. It's a lot of work, right? But even for service-based businesses, same thing for service-based businesses, right? You have some type of offer on the front end of your particular funnel. Like I say, it could be a discount on your particular service. It can be some type of informational video that talks about your particular service with the market that you're giving away, what have you. But what happens is, on the top of that funnel, you have an opt-in page where they opt in for that particular discount on that service, right? The markdown on that service, or some coupon code on the service, or uh, for them to receive some type of informational video where you're gonna educate them more about your particular service and how I can help them. And what happens is, they opt in to the opt-in page, they redirect it over to another page, if it was an offer where you're giving them a coupon code, then on that next page, guess what? Congratulations on taking advantage of getting your coupon on 15% off your next carpet cleaning. I'm just using that for an example if you had a carpet cleaning business. i right, just using that as an example. Congratulations on taking advantage of getting your 15% off your next carpet cleaning. Okay? The coupon code is here. All right, and pretty much you maybe can have a link up under that coupon code where they can click that link and they can take them over to your own personal site for that particular business and they can enter their coupon code up and set up their copy cleaning appointment, okay? And also on that thank you page as well, you can position another one-time offer. Right? You can position another one-time offer. If you take advantage of this 15% off your carpet cleaning, you know, right now, uh, we'll actually throw in cleaning another room for free or something like that. Right? But you have to take action right now. So click the link, go over to the website, enter in your coupon code, and schedule your carpet cleaning. You also collect their name and email on the front end of the funnel. So now they're going to your email database. And so now, if they didn't take advantage of the offer, you can have emails going out to them, redirecting them back to take advantage of the offer. Or if they did take advantage of the offer, you can still email them in the future, future promotions or offers to turn them into repeat customers for your particular business. Right? So this is why you have to have an offer in front of them. This automates everything for you. Okay? Automates everything. All right? Now, the next thing that's very key to the foundations of running profitable Facebook ads is market research. But before I get into that, how many of you all are getting some value out of this so far? If you're getting some value, show some love, drop some ones, because if you drop some ones, that's telling me you're serious about getting to the top 1% if you're not all the way there. Or if you're already there, you want to get into the top 1% of the 1%. Drop some ones below, show some love if that was some value to you. Before I go on and talk about the next key element, and the next foundational part to running profitable Facebook ad campaigns. How many of you all are getting value so far? And also, do we have any questions so far? If we have any questions, feel free to drop them below. Dropping the ones, Earl okay, and Janelle. So I, see the ones. I see the ones coming in. The ones coming through. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to drop them below. I have no problem answering any questions as well. All right, but that's why it's very important, like I said, to have an offer in the funnel. All right, so we're going to move on uh, for time's sake. Definitely market research. That's key. That is key. You have to do extensive market research to be successful with running profitable Facebook ad campaigns. Okay, so what do I mean by that? You want to create what we call a customer or client avatar, right? So basically, what does your ideal customer or client look like? A lot of people don't even be knowing this. I mean, I talk to some business owners sometimes on strategy session calls, and I'm asking them who are their ideal customers and clients they're looking to attract. They don't really even know. So the thing is, you have to know this type of stuff, right? 
Look at your history in terms of who has recently purchased from you in the past, right? Who has recently purchased from you? What do I mean by that? The people that were recently purchased from you, where were they located? Where were they located in terms of the United States, in terms of certain regions, certain cities, certain states, or if it's international, certain countries, right? Was it, was it more males that's purchased from you, more females that's purchased from you? Like, who is, who is the dominant gender that purchases from you? What's the age range? Right? Is it 18 to 25? Is it 18 to 65? Is it 24 to 65? Is it 35 to 54? Right? What is the age range? Okay? And then the next thing you will want to identify is what are some of the interests of your particular target market? So what I mean by that is what Facebook business pages online would your ideal customers and clients most likely be following? Okay? Whether that's public figures to whether that's business and company pages. What websites do they visit? What blogs do they read? What magazines do they read? Where do they shop at? Are they single? Are they married mostly? Do they have kids? Did they graduate from college? All this type of information. Right? What apps do they download? What softwares do they use? Right? These are all the questions you want to ask yourself in terms of market research. Do they work jobs? Do they own businesses? If so, what jobs do they work? What type of businesses do they own? You have to get crystal clear on this in terms of your market research. Because here's the thing, you can have a converted offer, you can have a sales funnel, but if you're not getting your advertisement campaigns in front of the right people, your ads are going to bump. Point blank period, you'll run through a whole lot of money, you'll burn through a lot of money with ads. You have to do the proper market research. Now, I'm going to give you some tips on how to do market research, okay? But here's the thing, it's so simple, if you already have an offer that's already converted, you should already know a lot of this information in terms of your customers and clients. That's what I tell a lot of business owners, right? But being that you want to do even more extensive research, I'll give you some tips real quick on that. Uh, for one, you definitely can go into Facebook groups where your particular audience that you may be looking to target is hanging out at. Go into those groups. And people that are in those groups, go over to their profile pages. Go over to their profile pages. See where they're located. Is it mostly men and women in the group? Or is it more men or more women? What are the age range? They show you people's birthdays too on Facebook. Facebook has all these data points on everybody that's on this platform. Right? Instagram as well. They have all these data points on these platforms on you. And me as well. Right? All of us. So that being said is, go over and see what are their birthdays, what are their age ranges. You can also look at what pages do they like on Facebook. You know, you can go and look at what pages people like, what's their hobbies, what books they like to read, right? What magazines they like to read, what events they like to attend, what places they like to go to, where do they like to shop, right? You can see all that on people's profile. So if you were to find... Facebook groups and communities where your audience may be hanging out at, that's an easy way to do market research. Another way, very quickly, I'm not going to be able to share every single way on here. If you want more assistance with this, you can reach out to me offline, or you can take a look at that link up in the caption, right, geraldbass.com slash get more sales, and we have a free case study where I go more in detail on this. But I'll give you another way. It's definitely audience insights. So all these insights is in the Facebook Business Manager. A lot of people don't use this. That's why I say you want to use the Facebook Business Manager, not boost posts off your page. Because with the Facebook Business Manager, all right, you can go into Audience Insights. And even if you have some type of idea about your target market, what do I mean by that? Some type of idea where they may be located. Some type of idea of what the age range is, the gender is. Maybe one interest that they have. You can plug it into Audience Insights, and Audience Insights is going to give you all this data, okay, to help you out a little bit more with your target, right? 
They're going to tell you based off what you plugged in, what percentage, male and female, within that audience is active on Facebook. The most age range. They're going to also tell you, as well, based off what you plugged in, they're going to tell you if a lot of the people within this audience are single, married, divorced. They're also going to tell you if these people finished high school, if they graduated college, if they went on to grad school. It's going to also tell you the job titles of these people within this audience. It's also going to tell you other Facebook business pages that you may want to target. With your ads in Audience Insights, it'll help you out. But of course, what you'll want to do is you'll want to actually go over to the pages and look at the content on the pages and look at the people that's engaging to make sure that this is where your audience will be at. That's a bonus nugget, right? They're also going to tell you on Audience Insights as well, okay, let's just say you was targeting the United States, very broad targeting. They're also going to tell you as well what cities and states your audience is most likely to be in within the United States so that you can narrow your targeting down. They're also going to tell you as well with this audience, are they more inclined to like your Facebook business page, right? Are they more inclined to comment on your ads, engage with their ads? They tell you all this day. Are they more likely to redeem any type of promotional offers that you're running? They tell you this day. Are they, going, are they more likely to share your ad? They tell you this data. They tell you as well, are these people most likely on desktop and mobile? Or are they, and uh, specifically if they're on mobile, what devices? Are they on iPhone? Are they on Android? Or are these people more inclined on iPads? They tell you all of this data in all these insights. I just gave you all a golden nugget. Look into it. Look into it. Okay? Look into it. But all this is key in terms of market research. All right, so that's that. Hope y'all got some value. If you got some value, show some love, please. Show some love. You know, drop some comments below. Drop some emojis, some fire. <laughs> if you receiving some flames, some value tonight. The next thing, we're going to get into actually talking about creating the actual ads now. The first thing to creating profitable Facebook ads is, number one, the campaign objective. The campaign objective. What is your campaign objective for your Facebook and Instagram ad? What is your campaign objective? Right? Are you looking to get traffic? Are you looking to get engagement? We call them post page engagement ads. Right? Engagement. Likes, comments, shares. Are people liking your business page? Right? Are you looking to get video views? Are you looking for lead generation? Are you looking for website conversions? Are you looking for downloads to an app? Are you looking for get people to purchase a particular product? What is the objective of the campaign? You have to know this first. Because Facebook is going to optimize based off of the objective that you set. So if you set that you're looking just to get page post engagement on an ad, guess what? Facebook is going to go out within that audience that you're targeting and look for people that's most likely to engage with your posts. If you're looking for lead generation, to generate leads or something like that for a particular product or service, build an email list, et cetera, guess what? You set the campaign to that, Facebook is going to go out and put the ads in front of people that's more inclined to become a lead and opt in. Right? Website conversions, same thing. Right? And so, with that being said, you have to know this first. Once you decide your campaign objective, okay, the next thing you want to do is you want to create your ad sets. This is the second part of creating an ad. Your asset is your target. I just talked about this. Question. Okay, what's the question? What's the question? Earl asks, can you find these things on like Shopify? I'm guessing he's talking about the audience insight. No, not audience insights. Not audience insights, no. The audience insights would just be in Facebook business manager. You have to go to business.facebook.com and you have to use the audience insights to in the Facebook business manager. Okay. Great question. Mm -hmm. So create assets. Right? We're going to talk about creating assets. Assets is the target. So this is what you're going to plug in the geographical location of where your audience is at. 
This is where you're going to plug in the gender, the age range, the interest that your particular audience has. Okay? Now, here's the thing here when it comes to plugging in interests or even behaviors of your particular audience. This is where a lot of people go wrong in terms of the Facebook and Instagram ads. And I'm going to be all the way real. And I've had some clients that, uh, you know, have looked to do it this way. But I'm just letting you know, our ad campaigns that have been the most successful, I'm going to tell you all this. We don't use the shotgun approach. So what I mean by that is we don't stack all these interests, right, of all these different pages in one ad set. We create separate ad sets for each interest because if you put all the interests, all these Facebook pages or audiences that you're looking to target in one ad set, once you launch the ads, a lot of times you won't necessarily know what audience is responding to the ad the most. So you may be spending money getting your ads in front of audiences that's not even resonating, right, with your particular ad, but you don't know it because you have all of them in one. Now, I do know in e-commerce at times, e-commerce, right, I do know in e-commerce a lot of us advertisers and marketers, when we sell e-commerce um, um, ad campaigns, sometimes we will put a great amount of interest in an ad set for that. But that's a different type of uh, business model versus like service-based type businesses and stuff like that. Um, so that's what I will say. You know, a lot of times when we are like running ads, you know, like I said, for those that may have, uh, let's say, you know, coaching, consulting businesses, information product type businesses, um, even at times for network marketers, we've done this and had success with it. Um, to, like I say, service-based businesses, even brick and mortar businesses. A lot of times we we'll separate each audience into different assets. So we know which one is performing the best. The ones that's performing the best, we keep running. The ones that's not, we turn them off. Okay, so that's the whole thing with that. You know, but some people, like I say, they like to do it the other way around. You know, but I'm just letting you know, like a lot of us marketers that's going on another level, that's normally what we do. Now, another thing I do want to share with you as well when it comes to creating assets is you're also able to create what we call custom audiences, right? Custom audiences. So basically what that means, it's a lot of things you can do with custom audiences. I could be here all night with that. So we're going to have to move through this fairly quickly. All I'm going to tell you this, with custom audiences, you can create audiences of people that have engaged with their post and ads over the last 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. You can create ads targeting them, right? We call it retargeting them, all right? You can create ads of people that have viewed, let's say, you know, 25% of your video. 50% of your video, right? 75% of your video to 100% of your video, right? To 10 seconds of your video. You can retarget people that have viewed your particular videos. Okay, so that's in custom audiences, right? You can retarget people that landed on certain pages of your sales phone. You can retarget them with ads in custom audiences. Another thing you can do in custom audiences is if you already have an email list of subscribers, which is some of our clients that come to us, they already have a big database, like big email list. You can take your email list, you can load it up into custom audiences, you can target people on your email list with your ads on Facebook and Instagram as well. A lot of people don't know that. And you can create what we call lookalikes. Okay, so what you can do is you can create a lookalike audience, around 1% of, let's just say, your email list, and Facebook and Instagram will go out and find people that look like everyone that's on your audience, uh, on your email list, on Facebook and Instagram, and put your ads in front of them. And this is how you massively scale your business online, not people don't know. But you need to have an email list of 1,000 subscribers or more. Email list of 1,000 subscribers or more. That's why we say build your email list. I have buddies making millions of dollars online, y'all. I'm not even going to talk about our ad campaigns. I'm talking about my buddies, right? <laughs> I'm not going to share everything we do in our ad campaigns. 
You have to get involved in the inner circle on that. But what I will say, I have buddies though, right? I have buddies who run all their ad campaigns off strictly looking like audiences. They're not targeting no cold audiences. You want to know why? Because they took the time to do what? Build an email list. Build an email list. That's it. Build an email list. All right, so create assets. The next thing you do in terms of assets, you set your budget. So how much are you willing to spend per day? And we usually like to set a lifetime budget. We don't do like the daily ad spend thing. We set lifetime budgets. Okay, and it works in favor for the business owner that does that in terms of the algorithm when you allow Facebook and Instagram to continue to run your ads, optimize, you know, based off how it's performing instead of letting it run and stopping it, letting it run and stopping it. You're messing with the algorithm and the optimization process. So you can run ads for a dollar a day on Facebook and Instagram. You can run ads for $3 a day, $5 a day, $10 a day, $20 a day, $50 a day. We've launched ad campaigns and we've launched with $100 a day since I've been running ads. Okay, I have some clients as well, $150 a day, we've dived in with running ads. Okay, so you may say, well, when it comes to budget, how should I look at that? I'm going to break it down to you this simple. How much are you willing to pay to get a customer or client? That's how you have to look at it. How much are you willing to pay to get a customer or client? Now, can we go into some deeper mathematics and stuff like that? And if, yes, we can, but it's based off your product or service. You know, it's based off the price point. It's based off your goals in terms of how much of this product or service you want to sell, whether it's daily, weekly, or monthly. So yes, we could go deeper in the math, but that's a case-by-case -case scenario. But you have to really just think about how much are you willing to pay to get a customer or client. That's how you look at daily ad spend. Okay? That's just the way you look at it. Now, creating the ads is the last thing down here. Creating the ads. Okay? So when it comes to creating the ads, what makes great ads? Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, for one, you have to have great ad copy. You have to know how to persuasively write. Okay? And there's a lot of ways you can write what we call ad copy. You got to get good at writing ads or you can hire a copywriter. Copywriters are not very cheap. Um, or, of course, if you're working with a digital marketing agency, normally they'll help you with writing copy. Um, but what I do want to tell you this here is that you got to know how to persuasively write words that sell that will move your market. Okay? You can't be a boring writer and all that type of stuff. you got to know how to write words. And it depends on the type of business you're in in terms of how you write your ad copy. Right? So, for instance, if you're in e-commerce, you're selling apparel or something like that, of course, you're not going to have very long ad copy. You'll get straight to the point in terms of what you're offering, what the discount is going to be, etc. Right? It won't be like long ad copy for an e-commerce type store. Okay, but it still needs to be something that will catch your market's attention in a news feed. And, you know, using emojis and stuff like that, that helps a lot in the e-commerce space when you're writing ads, uh, especially with social media. Um, but what I will say, like, for instance, if you have, like, a coaching business or an informational product business, or if you're in network marketing, affiliate marketing, or if you have, like, a digital marketing business, or whatever the case may be, a lot of times in those businesses we've seen that uh, storytelling ads – do very well, where you're sharing some type of transpromotional story of you being here, now you're here, or a client being here, now they're here, that, that helps, and also running testimonial ads. Um, testimonial ads also work very well in the e-commerce space, okay, we're not talking about testimonial ads specifically for e-commerce, we're talking about like uh, product review type of ads, right, or people wearing your stuff if it's in apparel and stuff like that, okay, that helps as well, even in the e-commerce space for any of you all that's, you know, selling uh, products, right, but those are the type of things you want to keep in mind in terms of right ad copy and the type of ads you want to create. Now, what I do want to tell you is, yes, you can test image against video right now with ads. We've seen with most of our clients, video is converting a whole lot higher, um, it's just what it is right now. You know, people want to see things in, uh, you know, we would say, uh, you know, real time or whatever the case may be. So video is actually converting a whole lot better for the majority of our clients. But what I do want to tell you with video, you have to do a lot more demonstrating than just telling. A lot of people do too much telling 
with their ads and not enough demonstrating showing how this particular product can help you know their market or you know like I said if it was apparel showing showing people actually wearing your apparel in the video right and stuff like that you know and um, for whatever type of business you have right where you're talking about some specific result that your particular product or service can get your market if you can demonstrate more than an ad than just telling it and add a slight bit of entertainment to it as well, that's going to help boost your conversions in terms of video. All right? Headlines, okay? You have to write effective headlines, and your headlines need to be benefit-driven. You want to write that down. Benefit-driven, okay? I'm not going to go to a whole training on headlines by itself, but headlines are key. And here's the thing if you want to run profitable Facebook or Instagram ad campaigns. You have to be testing a lot of different things. Testing different audiences. Right? You have to be testing different ad copy in terms of how you write your ads. Different variations of how you write your ads. Testing different images if you're using images. Testing different videos if you are using videos. Testing even how your ads are displayed. Right? So you might want to test a regular video ad versus a carousel ad. If you have a, a, you know, a product, okay, you may want to run a display product ad. They call it a DPA ad. That's a different type of ad where it, it, it's centered around a different type of way to highlight your, your products on Facebook. It's a certain way they sell the ads and stuff like that. Right, you can look more into it yourself. But what I'm saying is you have to be willing to test different ads. You also have to be willing to test a lot of headlines. These are all the variables. Now, the last thing I want to share with you all, and I'm done, and this is a bonus nugget for you all that's sticking around. But before I share, if you're still on here, you're getting value, and you want me to drop this last bonus nugget in terms of running profitable Facebook and Instagram ads, but we hop off. I can already hop on our Rising 1% Academy coaching call tonight at 9.00. So here's the thing here. If you want me to drop this last bonus nugget, show me some love, drop some ones, drop some emojis, let me know that you're getting some value. And if you all have any questions before I drop this last thing as well, feel free to drop them in the comment section. Okay? We're about to get ready to close out in a minute. All right, cool. So Charlotte says she's running ads right now, currently starting at $5 a day. Um, Earl Mills, he said that, okay, his website is set up through Shopify and it tracks his customers where they are and is linked to Facebook and Instagram to tell where his consumers or customers come from. So besides audience insight, he wants to know, can he set up campaigns um, on Shopify to show up on Facebook and IG as well as attached to a person's cookies driving them to my website? He was asking if that all makes sense. No, and here's the thing. The last couple of things too, um, one of the things I do want you all to realize as well, and I talk more about this with funnels, I want to say in the last live stream, but you also have to have a Facebook and even Instagram tracking pixel, right? So you want to be able to track all your traffic that's coming from Facebook and Instagram ads because you can be having traffic coming from multiple sources online and you don't necessarily know if what you're paying for is working. So with that being said, you want to have a tracking pixel. Make sure you write that down. It's a way to be able to set that up. You set that up through the Facebook business manager, okay? Or uh, you get you can get the pencil and you can get your web developer to put the pencil on all the pages of your website, all the pages of your store, right? Or what have you, or all the pages of your sales phone. So you have to have a tracking pencil as well. So keep that in mind. Tracking is definitely key, okay? Now, to answer the question, Anything when it comes to like the ad platform with Facebook and Instagram, you have to set them up through the Facebook business manager. You can't set them up in Shopify. You, you can't set them up in Shopify. Because Shopify is not necessarily an ad, ad, ad platform. It's a platform, you know, designed to be able to correct your stores. Um, so if you want to like drive the traffic from Facebook and Instagram, you have to set up the ads there. Now, what was the other question in terms of he was saying something around cooking? Um, let me go back. He say, um, 
So besides audience, it's like, can I set up campaigns on Shopify? We answer that. Show up on Facebook and IG. Well, as attached to a person's cookie, I'm guessing he's, um, far as they're tracking to their cookies on their computer, driving them to his website. That's all he has right here. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, if you set up, like I said, a tracking pistol in a business manager or Facebook or Instagram, yeah, pretty much, um, when you set up that pistol and you put it on all the different pages of your website, your store, etc., what end up happening is Facebook and Instagram is going to basically be tracking all that traffic and their activity as they land on the different pages of your website or your store, etc., or your funnel, what have you. Right, they're going to be tracking all of that. That data is going to be reported back to Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. Okay, so even if you want to set up retargeting ads to retarget those people that are landing on those specific pages of your website, your store, sales funnel, etc., you can set up those retargeting ads because the tracking pixel is on all the pages of the website, the store, your funnel, etc. Okay, so that's how that works. All right. So the last thing I was going to share with you all in closing is you have to understand your numbers if you want to run profitable Facebook ads. And what I want to tell you all is, is this. A lot of people see all this different stuff back in the Facebook you know, ads manager and they get very overwhelmed and they don't really know what it means. I'm going to tell you all this very clearly. Okay, There's certain things that we look at um, back in the, ma the business manager. You know, We don't necessarily look at every single um data point back there, okay, because all of it's not needed, right? You're focusing on how much was spent the day before, you're focusing on how many clicks came in on the ad the day before, making sure it's getting clicks. If it's not getting clicks, that's a problem. That means that your market definitely is not resonating with your particular offer and your ad. We're focusing on the average cost per click. We're focusing on how many leads were generated. What was the average cost per lead? Okay, and then, you know, we're focusing on if you're e-commerce, of course, how many purchases were made, and of course, you know, what was the average cost per purchase. If you get a phone calls book, we're focusing on how many calls a book, what was the average cost per call booking, and of course, off those call bookings, how many sales were made, and what was the cost to get that sale. Right, those are the those are the numbers, and it varies depending on your particular business, your product or service, your price point. Okay, it depends on how many offers you have. If you have a back end, it depends on a lot of different things in terms of what you want the cost to be. So that that's a case by case situation. But I want to let you know those are a lot of the metrics you want to really learn about if you want to run profitable Facebook or even Instagram ads. So with that said, y'all, I'm completely done tonight. Does anybody else have any questions? And if you want to dive a little bit more deeper into this, I have a link to a case study up in the description, geralbass.com slash get more sales, geralbass.com slash get more sales. I go a whole lot more detail, a whole case study, how to generate 15 to 30 qualified leads a day that convert over to paying clients. We also talk about the importance of growing your social presence and all that type of stuff as well. It's a case study up in the description. Uh, so make sure you click that link. You can opt in, take a look at the case study video to get a better understanding, get more visuals and stuff. See what, some of the work we've done for some of our clients and it make a lot more sense to you. And then if you want to speak to me directly, you can schedule a call after watching that video. Or if you just want to schedule a call with me, period, just shoot me an inbox. Okay, just shoot me an inbox if you just want to schedule a call and we can set up a time to talk over the next couple of days if you want to deep dive more into your specific situation. Do we have any questions in closing? Uh, but we're pretty much done. Any questions? Okay, so... And, uh, feel free to share this around as well, y'all. Anyone else you feel could benefit as well. Go ahead. All right, so Earl said, okay, cool, because he clicked on something from Mark Well, and once he clicked on it, it was like he was everywhere. For an example, he was playing words with friends and went to commercial, and lo and behold, it was him, all because I clicked on the link on Facebook. Yeah, that's a retargeting that. So, so yeah, that's what I was just saying. That that's a retargeting that. So pretty much, he has a pistol on the site that you clicked on, and of course, that dropped the cookie on you know your laptop, phone, whatever the case might be. Dropped the cookie. And so now what happens is 
he has retargeting ads pretty much set up for everybody that lands on that specific page that does not take the specific action that he's looking for them to take. He starts to show them other ads that follow you around on social media. That's called retargeting. That's what I was just talking about. Exactly what I was just talking about. And that's all set up from the Facebook business manager. So I know you was asking me about doing it in Shopify. That's set up from the Facebook business manager. You have to set up, you have to grab your pencil code from the Facebook business manager and you have to have it put on every page of your site or your store or sales funnel. In Marquell's place, I'm pretty sure it was a sales funnel. Okay, you have to put the pencil code on every page in the header section. All right, any other questions? I hope that helped. Janelle just said thank you. No problem at all. That's it. Awesome, y'all. So if y'all got value, feel free to share this around. If you want to connect with me off of here, like personally, you just want to hop on a call with me, then shoot me a message. We can talk over the next 24 to 48 hours, chat it up. We can go maybe more specific on your specific situation, maybe map you out a framework on how this can work for you. Um, if you want to take a look at the case study prior to scheduling a call, the link is up in the description. Just click it. And you can look at a video me and my guy Antonio Millhouse created sharing how to grow your social presence and generate 15 to 30 qualified leads a day that convert over to paying customers and clients, okay? Um, the, the case study link is up there. Or like I said, you can just reach out and we can schedule the time to speak. Either way I go, I enjoyed you all. Feel free to share this around with anyone that you feel could benefit. You all definitely stay safe out here with everything that's going on. Keep your family safe. Uh, keep pushing forward. Definitely all my entrepreneurs, business owners, or those that may be experiencing job loss right now. Online is the opportune time right now to position yourself to potentially be making some great money right now because traffic is up on the internet because it's more people at home right now and more people are buying things from home because they don't want to go out in a lot of public places, right? And so that positions you if you already have a business and you have a product or service that definitely is needed within the market right now to definitely be getting out to a lot of people because people are at home right now and for you all that may be suffering job loss at this time, it's a perfect opportunity to maybe look into starting an online business, right? If you need assistance with that, reach out as well, right? I also help people start online businesses too. So with that said, y'all, we are done. Definitely have a great rest of your night and great rest of your week on purpose. Another Digital Talk Tuesday completed and we definitely look forward to seeing you all in the 1%. Have a great one.